Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Dibble from Pace Cardiology. And this is a second in a video series where we're going to talk about coronary artery disease in patients who have no symptoms. In the first one, we address the question, how do I find out if I might have plaque when I have no symptoms and I have a normal stress test? So I'm going to take you through two patient scenarios here. Let's take the first one. They're going to both be quite similar, but their test results are going to be different. So on the first gentleman, let's say he's 50 years old, no symptoms, concerned because his best friend just had a heart attack and he wants to know how good or bad his risk is. We go through risk factors, we address them, we also do the stress test, there's no problems, and then we go on and do the CT scan, the CT angiogram to help assess his coronary arteries rather than the invasive one. In this case, this gentleman has no calcium, so that's a suggestion of no plaque, and we don't see any suggestion of narrowings either. The reason we look at both of those is because calcium only deposits when the plaques have been there for a long time. So we still want to know if there's any suggestion of narrowing even if there's no calcium. But in this gentleman's case, he has none of that. So that is excellent for him. It gives him a very low risk of having any heart attack in the near future. It's not a guarantee that there could be no problem forever because of course in the decades to come, plaque could still form. So for that gentleman, I would reassure him that we don't see any evidence of any problems, but it's still important for him to do everything he can to reduce his risk. So if he has high blood pressure or really high cholesterol or diabetes, those should be treated. And as far as the lifestyle choices he can make, we want to make sure he doesn't smoke, that he tries to be active and maintain a healthy weight with a good diet. But that's about all there is to do for that gentleman. Now let's change the story a little bit so that the same 50-year-old gentleman with no symptoms, concerns because of his best friend having an event, his stress test is negative, but in this case his CAT scan angiogram comes back with an abnormality. There is some calcium in it. Let's say it's about the 70th percentile, which means he has more calcium than 70% of the people in his age group. And he also has a plaque that suggests to be about 50% in one of the arteries. Now in his case, because we know he has no symptoms, and a 50% narrowing isn't considered severe, it won't affect flow until it's usually tighter than 70%. He doesn't need a stent or a bypass because there's not gonna be anything achieved with that. But what we do wanna do is we wanna help prevent the narrowing from getting worse, and we wanna help prevent it from ever becoming unstable. There are two parts of an artery plaque that I want to address. One of them is how tight it is, and the other is how unstable it is. So first let's talk about how tight a narrowing is because that's easier to understand and appreciate, almost like scale that forms on a pipe. As you can appreciate, the tighter the narrowing gets, the more likely that symptoms will develop as it starts to interfere with blood flow through the heart. But a tight narrowing uh, will generally only cause symptoms once it reaches about 70%. So in this gentleman's case where he's got an abnormal scan, we're not surprised he has no symptoms because he hasn't reached that point. So we want to prevent it from getting worse. And the way we do that is treating all those same risk factors we talked about, both the lifestyle choices he can make and the medications that we can offer. And in that case, since plaque has been proven, we would generally recommend an aspirin a day and cholesterol lowering, and we would want his blood pressure to be well in the normal range, not even borderline high. But just because a narrowing is tight doesn't mean it's going to cause a heart attack. In fact, some of these narrowings that are tight can be very firm almost like rubber and they're not going to rupture and they're not going to cause heart attacks. So if we take this gentleman who has a 50% narrowing and we help prevent it from getting tighter, he may never have a symptom in his entire life. But there's the other aspect of the narrowing I referred to, the, how stable it is. And this is sometimes hard for a lot of folks to appreciate, but how stable it is has very little to do with how tight it is. So you can have a 90% narrowing that's very firm and very stable and not going to cause heart attack, but causes angina. And you can have a 30% narrowing that's quite mild and would not cause symptoms, but it's very unstable and very much at risk of causing heart attack. When I say it's unstable, think of it like a lot of porridge being held in place by thin tissue so that it can easily tear open and rupture. And then of course, once it's cut, the body tries to clot it off and that's where the heart attack happens. And that's the kind of person who has a heart attack out of the blue without any warning whatsoever because they had a mild narrowing before, but it was unstable. So can I tell if a narrowing is unstable or not? That's one of the unfortunate things about the modern era is we don't have any easy investigations to determine if a narrowing is stable or unstable. 
in someone who has no symptoms. If somebody's story is changing quickly, that's a sign it's unstable. But for this 50-year-old gentleman who has no symptoms that we're talking about, there's no real way to know. There have been investigations done with catheters that go down the arteries and either image them from the inside with ultrasound or measure their temperatures that can give us an indication if they might be unstable. But that's just not really for prime time use in the everyday world. That's only been done for investigations. So the best we can do is say, let's take the person who's got this plaque. How do we make it more stable? Well, the good news is it's the very same things I already recommended to help prevent it from getting tighter namely modifying risk factors, treating the things we can treat like blood pressure, cholesterol, and diabetes, and living healthy like getting off cigarettes, being active, keeping a healthy weight, and a healthy diet. So those two measures alone, the lifestyle changes the patients can make, the medications we can offer, they can help prevent the narrowings from A, from getting worse, and B, from becoming unstable in the future. So really to sum up, the same two gentlemen who had very similar stories, 50 years old, no symptoms, concerned about their risk, normal stress test. One of them has a CT scan that's fine. We encourage all the lifestyle measures and the risk factors be treated if they're out of control. The second gentleman who has proven plaque, we would generally recommend aspirin, cholesterol lowering, and otherwise the same measures, reducing risk factors, healthy lifestyle. Those are the best measures we have to help prevent somebody having an event in the future.